Hi everyone, it's Shari here today and I'm going to be showing you how I made this great fall gift card pop-up card. So I made one of these back for Inspiration Week and this is the one I made for that week. And it has these really fun fall trees on the inside to embellish the pop-up gift card holder that goes on the inside. So today I'm going to be showing you how I made it. So I made the trees using alcohol ink. And I've picked out my colors here. So I have the sunshine yellow, the poppy red, citrus for the green, and I also have sunset orange. And I'm gonna pull in the watermelon a little bit too when I get to the red and you'll see that. So I've got a piece of vellum and I'm just gonna cut it into four equal size pieces, cut it in half both directions, and that way I can ink each one with one color for my trees. And it's going to give me a lot more paper than I need for these little trees, but I'm going to have lots of extra left over for other projects. So to use the alcohol ink, you want the ink felt applicators. You just put it onto an ink blending tool. And I'm going to start with the yellow. And I've just got a piece of typing paper here. You want to protect your surface. And actually, some of the ink went through because I used so much, but alcohol took care of that for the most part. You can also use the nonstick craft sheet too to do this on top of, but I like the piece of typing paper because it absorbs the ink really well. So you just put the little dots of ink on the felt applicator and then you just kind of start pouncing it around on the piece of vellum. When it starts to get a little dry, you just add more ink. And I actually like it to where you kind of get these little blotchy splotches. It gives it some texture to that vellum color. You could make it smoother if you like. I'm going to do this for each of the four colors. So now I'm going to go in with the sunset orange and start inking that piece. You can also mix colors as well. And so I actually went in with some of the yellow on top of the orange. And you can see it sort of pushes the orange away, makes some lighter blots. For the red, I used the poppy red, but I also put on some dots of watermelon so that it would kind of have two tones of red. It's still really bright red. And the more you add, the deeper that red gets. For the green, I just used the citrus. Um, I wish I had another green color to add to this, but I don't. So just adding the splotches. The more you dab it around, gives you kind of some variations in color. So here are my four pieces. I set aside, let them dry. It doesn't take very long. And now I'm going to die cut them. So the die that I use to cut the trees is actually the shadow box die. And it comes with these three little tree tops that are three different sizes. And then you can see the tree trunks, which are all attached together. So I will cut the tree trunks out of some brown cardstock. And then I'm going to cut the vellum with the little three sizes of tree tops. And I'm gonna cut all the colors and cut a whole bunch of them so that I'll have lots of trees to play with. I just put all three of those on a piece of post-it note tape just to kind of hold them together to make it a little easier. And I'm just gonna start running this through my die cut machine till I have a whole bunch of tree tops. You can see here, I didn't even use up the whole sheet, so I have some left over for future projects. I think they would look really cool if you cut out the little tiny leaves that are in the tree backdrop dies. And then I've cut out a bunch of the trunks there. So I'm just going to start assembling trees. Now there are three sizes of tree tops and there are three sizes of trunks and they coordinate with each other. I'm going to be using some Ranger Matte Multimedium. I've got a precision tip on it and you don't need very much. So you just put a little bit on the back of those tree trunks. And then I'm just going to lay it on top. And I realized that I kind of needed to sort the trunks and the tops a little bit. Because the trunks right next to each other is sort of hard to tell the difference between the different sizes. So I picked through here and laid them out a little bit. So that I saw my three sizes and then as I went I kind of sorted them a little bit I didn't sort all of them together but in order to find the small one that goes with the small tree and not end up putting 
a big one on the small tree. I just decided to sort them a little bit as I went. And since this is a liquid glue, it'll take a little bit of time to dry. And so a good thing to do is just to set an acrylic block on top and hold it flat while it dries. It doesn't take it too long to set up, but it'll keep it from curling. So now I've got all these trees put together, way more trees than I need. I've got a couple still drying there. And now I'm going to go ahead and start working on assembling the card base. So here is the gift card pop-up die. I already have a piece of this light brown knock on wood um, pattern paper. It's cut in half, so it's six inches wide, which will be perfect for this die. And then I'm going to cut two more pieces of it, and those will be the hills that I'm going to put behind the gift card pop-up mechanism. So I'm just going to cut this piece down a little bit. For this, I need three inches wide piece just to fit that die on there. So I'm going to cut that off first so I make sure I have that. And I'll set that aside for the gift card pop-up. And then I'm going to cut some pieces that are a little bit taller. And those are the pieces I'm going to use to cut my hillsides. Now the gift card pop-up die is going to cut this at five and a half inches wide, which is perfect for an A2 size card, but the hillsides obviously don't do that. So I'm trimming those down to where they're five and a half inches, which is the right width to fit behind the gift card pop-up mechanism. And now I can use that gift card pop-up die and cut out the gift card pop-up that goes on the inside. So there are some score lines when you cut this out. You just need to fold it in half this direction in the center. And then where the scallops are, there's a score line and you want to fold it back the other direction. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold all those and make sure they're increased very well. I want to make sure that this is really stuck down well, so I'm going to be using some double-sided tape adhesive to stick it to the card base. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. This is thin enough to where it can fit right behind those scallops and it's not going to stick out, and I'll just trim off the edges. I want to be sure that it goes the whole way so that this really stays in the card really well. And you can see there, I've got a cream colored um, A2 size card that I've already cut and folded. And so now I can just pull off this backer tape and I'm gonna put this gift card pop up right in the center of it. So you're going to line this up with the crease on the inside of the card. And I'm actually gonna do one side and the other, than the other. You could just line it up and then fold the card around it. So I'm putting down the one side, then I'm going to lay this down, fold the scallop piece back, and then fold my card over, and pick up that adhesive on that side, and see there the gift card pop-up is. So I've got my gift card sitting in there, and I've got two of the stitched hillsides border dies, and I'm just going to figure out exactly where I want those hillsides to go. So I'm going to have this one kind of go behind the card a little bit. So I'll just hold that down with some post-it note tape and run it through my die cut machine. And then for the hill in the back, I'm going to have that one a little bit higher. And once I figure out exactly where I want it and the angle I want it at, I'll just hold that down with some post-it note tape as well. And run that through my die cut machine. Once I have those hills cut, you can see how they layer behind each other. And then we're going to adhere that front hill to the very bottom of the gift card pop-up. So you don't want to put too much adhesive on it. So what I decided to use is a very wide double-sided adhesive tape and put it right along the bottom of the front of that front hill. I'm not going to adhere this just yet, but I'm going ahead and putting that piece of adhesive on there. So 
you want to make sure it's at the bottom and it's not going to overlap where the card sticks out. Now I decided to add a little bit extra to this card that I didn't add to the card that I did before and I'm going to ink the edges of the hillsides with a little bit of distress ink. And this is just tea dye distress ink and a blending tool and I'm just going right along the edge of the hillside and this will just kind of define the edge a little more so that you can see it against the hillside behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this one just so that they will match. Now I can adhere down the front one onto the back one. So this is a very flat, you don't want any foam adhesive so that your card will lay flat because this is all inside. I tried not to put it too close to the top so that I can tuck my little trees in behind that front hill. Now I can go ahead and adhere this to the back of the gift card pop-up mechanism. So there are my hillsides all adhered down. Now it's time to start filling in the forest. So I'm using the matte multi-medium adhesive again with a little precision tip and all it takes is a little dab of glue on the front of the trunk, very at the bottom, because I'm going to tuck these behind. So you want to make sure that's on the front of the trunk, at least for all these trees that go behind the hills. I'm going to do a couple at the very bottom that will be on the front side and I'll show you that in just a minute. And if you have all these trees made ahead of time, this goes really fast and you can just kind of fill in. You want to make sure that you vary the colors that are beside each other and the sizes that are beside each other. So try not to put two of the same color right next to each other as well as two of the exact same size. So if you have a lot of these already cut out in a variety of sizes and colors, it's really easy to fill this in put as many trees or as little trees as you like. So this one is going to go on the front, lined up all the way with the bottom there. So you want to make sure that adhesive goes on the back. And I actually like to overlap where the card's going to go a little bit so that the trees are in front of the gift card. I'm going to have lots of trees left over so I can make a couple more of these probably to give out. I'm going to stick that gift card in there. You don't need any trees behind it because you're not going to see them, but it's a good reference so that you can fill in around it. Now to use the sentiment, I'm using the Jump for Joy set because I like the font of the So Thankful and the coordinating sentiments that go with it. So the other one said, so thankful follows here. This one is going to say, so thankful for your kindness. Now, if you're not comfortable with stamping a sentiment straight, I suggest you do this before you put anything in the card. But I'm pretty good at getting it straight, as long as I don't drop it. So I'm going to stamp the sentiment. But if you're worried about ruining your project when it comes to the sentiment, please stamp this first before you adhere any of these pieces into the card. Once the pieces are in the card, it's really hard for this to lay flat, so I suggest you do it beforehand. Here's the difference between the two. You can see what kind of difference that inking made. Now I've got all my pieces cut out for the front of my card. Um, I have the teal knock-on wood paper with the fancy scallop circle, the orange with the regular scallop circle, and then I used a dotted circle die to cut out a cream piece as well as a piece of that light brown. And I'm gonna use the stitched hillside to cut that light brown hill and I'm making something very similar to what you see in the top right corner there. I'm just going to assemble these pieces together putting the hill on the front of the cream colored circle and then I'm going to put that on top of my teal fancy scallop circle here. And then I'm going to use a couple of the trees that I had from before and I'm going to adhere those to the front. Now the one you see in the top right uses the knock on wood papers for the trees, which you could also do, but I've got all these trees already done. The only thing with the vellum trees is you wanna make sure you only put the adhesive on the trunk. So if you put it behind the vellum, you're gonna probably see that a little bit. Once that's together, I can work on the little part that's gonna wrap around the card, which is this yellow piece of paper here, it's cut to one inch wide. Now before I 
adhere all these pieces on the strap together, I want to put this orange scallop circle on the front of the card. And what I want to make sure I do, because the idea is that that teal circle layers on the inside of the orange circle, I want to make sure that my trees are oriented correctly. So I'm lining up the scallops to where my trees are oriented correctly, and then that will show me the correct way to adhere down the orange piece. Because I want those scallops to line up. So once I figure out where I need it, I can adjust it here that down to the card base. Now that that's in place, I can wrap my piece of yellow paper around my card. And I'm just using my grid mat to kind of make sure it's straight so that my folds will be straight. I'm just going to center the card up on that whole strip which is 12 inches long by the way, and just wrap that around. You don't want to score it to where it's exactly five and a half inches in the middle because this card has some thickness to it. So you want to measure it more by folding it around the card versus scoring it on a scoreboard. Now that I've got my folds where I need them to be, I can adhere the two ends together so that it stays together in one strap around the card to keep it closed. And then that will just slide right on. You also don't want to go ahead and score it at a time because you don't want it to be too tight where you can't slide it on and off the card. By putting the fold in the front, we're going to cover it up with the circle with the trees. Now I'm putting the adhesive onto the yellow paper because I want to make sure I only have adhesive where that strap is versus putting adhesive all over the back of the green piece of paper because then I will adhere it to the card which I don't want to do. So that's just a little easy tip there so that your adhesive ends up in the right place. So now it's all lined up perfectly and your recipient can just slide off that piece and then there is the inside for the pop-up card. So here's a look at the outside all put together, and then here's the inside with that gift card. As you can tell, the gift card was slight inspiration for the design of this card. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.